I want to bring in my first guest today. It's Labor's Foreign Affairs spokesman, spokeswoman rather, Penny Wong. Welcome to the program. <laughs> Unusual slip from you, Patricia. I know. It's good to be with you. Disturbing. Uh, <laughs> Matthias Corman says Labor thinks Gladys Liu is a Chinese spy. Is that what you think? Are you suggesting that she's a spy? Well, the only person that has used inflammatory language like that uh, has been Senator Cormann and also the, the Prime Minister. But let's understand what's happened here. We've had public reports in relation to Ms Liu for some time in relation to her membership of various organisations and various donations. She gave an interview uh, in an attempt to clear it up. I think that interview and subsequent statements actually raise more questions. Uh, it is legitimate for her to be asked uh, to be accountable to the Parliament and to the Australian people about these matters and that's what we're asking. We've seen further revelations of questionable donations made to the Liberal Party by Gladys Liu, including 105,000 from a company she worked for. This, this is uh, being reported. What are your concerns about those latest revelations? Oh, well, well I, I think the concerns are that you have a number of reports that have not been responded to appropriately. Uh, so uh, I think what we have to remember here is as members of parliament, as senators and members, we are accountable to the people who elect us and we're also accountable under the Westminster system to give truthful statements to the parliament. Uh, and as yet, the Prime Minister and his ministers have spent a lot of effort in ensuring that Ms Dewey doesn't stand up and give a statement to the parliament and, and really she ought to. But she has provided that statement and in fact the Prime Minister tabled it. What's, well, yes. Sorry, the Prime Minister tabled it and what was reported was that uh, that statement was written for her by the Prime Minister's office and that has never been refuted. So if, if, if look, if you're a member of Parliament, uh, accusations are made uh, externally by, by, by others, uh, concerns are raised, uh, it is legitimate for, for people to say you should make a statement when the, these matters go to whether or not uh, you're a fit and proper person to be in the parliament. It's also been reported that when Gladys Liu was president of the Eastern Multicultural Branch, it proposed a motion to make foreign investment in agriculture and agricultural land easier. That's a report from the ABC over the weekend. Is that significant in your view? Oh, look, there's, there's been a lot of arguments about foreign investment. You know, I, I've had a, had a view that uh, some, some, of the, some of the arguments against foreign investment uh, haven't been well founded. I, I've taken the view previously, for example, that it depends on the sector and we should look at which sectors we want foreign investment and which we don't. So, uh, look, I, I haven't looked at the text of that. I, I'm more interested in a whole range of reports that haven't been adequately responded to. OK, so on this argument that, you know, some of these organisations just put your name on a list and that perhaps it didn't involve active participation or any attempt at interference. Do you accept that that's possible? Uh, th that may be possible, uh, but she should stand up in the parliament and explain that. Uh, and <laughs> I'm sure you'll get to this point, but I, I do think it's really quite telling that the Prime Minister, Senator Cormann, uh, the Foreign Minister and others have all been very happy to hurl accusations at Labor about our motivation, really. But not one of them, not one minister has been prepared to stand up in the Parliament of Australia and say, I believe that Ms Liu is a fit and proper person to be in this Parliament. Well, I they, mean, that speaks volumes, doesn't it? They do say they stand behind her. So let's well, talk... Well, no, that is a very different thing. That is a, a... I mean, words do matter when you're making a assurance to the Parliament. No minister has been prepared to assure the Parliaments of her fit... of Ms Liu's fitness to be in the Parliament. They want to make an attack and, and to obfuscate or to cloud the issue. They don't want to say that. That says something. Do you believe that any of the reaction to the stories that have emerged about Gladys Liu are tinged with xenophobia or racism? I've always uh, taken the view as somebody who's I think been on the record all of my public life and before that about the importance of inclusion and respect and acceptance and support for multiculturalism that we have to handle these debates debate sensitively and I, I don't think it's helped by a refusal uh, to be accountable. I don't think a refusal to be accountable uh, and making accusations about the motivations of others is a sensible way to do with this uh, nor is it a sensible way to ensure we, we continue to have a, an accepting and inclusive society. So are you alleging that the government's deliberately using what many have described as the race card to try not to answer questions on this? I, I think it is a deliberate tactic and I think that's demonstrated by the fact that when they are asked to say 
assure the Senate, assure the Parliament uh, that uh, Ms Liu is a, a fit and proper person to stand in the Australian Parliament, what do they do? They attack the Labor Party. They, they, don't, they don't stand up and say she is. I mean, the, the, the accusation seems to be if you ask a person who's of Chinese heritage a difficult question that that's somehow a racial attack. Well, you've asked me a couple of difficult questions. You're probably going to ask me a few more. Do you think you're racist? Do you think that's a racial attack? I mean, it's absurd and, and wrong. How about the impact on Chinese Australians? Because that's what the Prime Minister is Ab suggesting, absolutely. that it's a, having a broader impact on Chinese Australians, perhaps their participation in public life. Is it uh, something you're concerned about? Of course, uh, I am. Uh, and I am concerned about the debate because of the way the Prime Minister, in a really very low political tactic, has sought to bring in all Chinese Australians into this debate. It's really not the act of a leader. Um, you know, I, I don't think he should be uh, trying to stand behind the many Australians of Chinese heritage from the very, you know, the diverse backgrounds from which we come. Um, I don't think he should be doing that. You know, it's... Th th this, the way in which this debate is being handled by the Prime Minister, I think, really is all about political tactics, uh, not about what's right. And I think that was demonstrated by his... You know, frankly, how he misled the Australian people. He tried to pretend he'd never said the words Shanghai Sam. Um, and as the country knows, he said it many, many times. Well, he fronted up to an interview that afternoon. This was uh, at the end of last week on Friday and said, yep, he acknowledges he used the words. Isn't that enough? Well, this was after he denied ever using those words and after it ran on television so it became clear that he wasn't telling the truth. OK, well, you can, you can accept that that's a... I'm just asking you know, you know, you could, Sorry. One could, you know, others I might say that that shows that he's fronted up. I think he just got caught out. So on the broader implications for Chinese Australians and the way mm. we're having these debates, is there a sense of China panic going on in this debate? Well, I, I think, uh, and I, I, I would say, if you look at how I've handled these issues in the period, not only in my, my previous uh, portfolios, but as a shadow foreign minister, I do think we have to be careful in how we have a discussion about the, the relationship uh, with China um, and how that impacts upon Chinese Australians. Uh, and I think it is really irresponsible for the Prime Minister to try and drag the whole Chinese Australian community in uh, to defend his he, defend himself politically. I think that is the wrong thing for the leader of the country to do. So will Labor continue to pursue this issue throughout the week? Well, uh, if the Prime Minister could end this pretty quickly, he could stand up in the parliament. He could say, "I give, you know, we move that the Senate, uh, the member for Chisholm be, be heard." She can give a, a statement which um, responds to the many public reports that some of which you've referenced today in this interview. Uh, and he could give a statement as prime minister that he assures the house that she's a fit and proper person to stand in the parliament. That would end it. All right, let's move on to another issue. Oil prices have risen by as much as 20 percent today, following the weekend drone attack on. Saudi Arabia's largest oil refinery and a major pipeline. Should Australians be worried about the security of our supply? Oh, well, that's really a question for the government. But what I would say, it is deeply concerning, uh, these attacks. It's deeply concerning uh, what is occurring. And we would really urge um, this, that these matters be resolved calmly. We would really urge that there not be escalation uh, in response to, to what we've seen over the weekend. US President Donald Trump has mm. tweeted that America is locked and loaded following the drone attack on Saudi Arabia. How worried are you that this could be the trigger for, for a wider conflict? Well, which is why I, I responded in my first answer that we would urge that this, this not escalate. Uh, escalation, uh, we, uh, I believe, doesn't serve anybody's interests. And, uh, and th that's language, obviously, for the president to choose, but uh, we would not. Uh, uh, be supportive of you know, rhetoric and actions which escalate the situation. Labor backed the government's decision to join freedom of navigation exercises in the Strait mm. of Hormuz. If Scott Morrison is asked to do more, should he refuse? Look, a couple of points. Uh, you're asking me to speculate. Uh, we made clear uh, our support for uh, the Australian uh, engagement in in that operation uh, and like the government it was on the basis of supporting freedom of navigation. Uh, we also uh, like the government 
recognise the importance that this be a very limited uh, and confined engagement, which is uh, as the, the Minister for Defence and the Prime Minister announced. We did also make clear, and I make it clear again, that the position that the Australian Labor Party has taken and, and the government has been different to that of the Trump administration when it comes to the Iran nuclear deal uh, and that we continue to support the what's known as the JCPOA as the way forward. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is visiting the US later this week, as you know, but he's not going to the UN Climate Summit. Is that a mistake? Oh, I think it is. I, I think you only need to talk to... Uh, millions of Australians, particularly young Australians who care about this issue, uh, to, to know that we need to be part of responding to climate change. I mean, it's, you know, we've spent a long time as a country uh, fighting about how we deal with climate change and whilst we've been fighting, things have got worse and harder to respond to. Uh, and as someone who was minister now over 10 years ago, who uh, worked very hard to try and get an emissions trading scheme up and was part of a government that did get a, uh, an effective carbon scheme up, it is, it is quite sad to see where we are as a country and the sort of discussions we're having where ministers are actually saying they're not sure about the science. I mean, where are we? Do you support the target Labor took to the election of a 45% reduction in carbon emissions by 2030? Oh, look, I support strong action on climate change and that absolutely was our target at the last election. Uh, I want to make a point about targets. Every time we talk about targets, I, I have to say how sad I feel uh, that a decade ago I was in the, the chamber downstairs advocating for an emissions trading scheme which would have, would have ensured we could have had even more ambitious targets than the ones that uh, we're talking about. Uh, and that was voted down by the Greens and the Coalition. Uh, and, you know, I think that was a sad day for the country. I said at the time it would get harder, and it has. Now, we will go to the next election with a climate policy that, that reflects uh, our, our values and our principles, but right now we're not the government. So if you want to talk about targets, I reckon you should be talking to the government. Uh, look, there's no doubt the government should answer questions on targets, <laughs> but I'm interviewing you right now. Mm -hmm. This 45% reduction, do you think that should be re-looked at? Look, we went to the election with a, with a, clear, with a clear set of targets. Uh, we will look at those targets uh, between now and the next election. We will ensure that the Australian people are very clear about what our targets will be. Anthony Albanese has made that clear. We'll look at our policies, but we won't re-examine our values. OK, so you accept that the 45%, because some of your oh, colleagues I have said I, this... I, I, sorry, I interrupted you. No, well, you know where I'm going. Is, is perhaps too ambitious? Well... <laughs> I support ambitious action on climate change and I do that and, and so does the Labor Party and we've been trying for uh, many, many years uh, to achieve a, a system of regulation, a, a, a system of, um, of, of, of when it comes to carbon uh, abatement uh, and mitigation that, uh, that works. Uh, now we lost government, uh, it was uh, repealed uh, and we have to continue to fight uh, for effective action on climate. Now, unfortunately, we lost the last election, and so we'll have to look at the world uh, in the lead up to the next election uh, to ensure we have uh, appropriate mechanisms, appropriate policies in place. Uh, uh, as I said, though, I, I, I do think it is a sad time for Australia that we are uh, having this discussion when we could have had if, if the Labor government had been able to continue and been able to continue its, its, position, its uh, legislation, we would have had much more ambitious targets on the table. Fiji's Prime Minister Frank Bunimarama is visiting Australia today. He was offended by the Prime Minister's conduct at the Pacific Islands Forum. It seemed more of a friendly exchange today, of course, across the Cabinet table, at least from what I saw in the, 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 the cameras captioned. What does Australia need to do to mend fences today? I'm not sure whether this government is able ultimately to do what it has to do in the Pacific whilst it retains it, the position it retains on climate change. Um, the, um, they're the facts. I mean, the Pacific step up, uh, you know, has bipartisan support. We certainly support a closer engagement with the Pacific, and there are a range of measures in as part of that closer engagement, which uh, uh, you know, la Labor has contributed to, and uh, which we continue to support. But ultimately, uh, climate change is front and centre for the Pacific Island nations. Uh, they make clear it's their number one economic and, and security threat. Uh, and we have a government uh, that doesn't accept the science uh, and, as importantly, doesn't want to act. 
So it's very difficult for the government, the coalition government, uh, to do what has to be done for, in Australia's national interest in the Pacific for as long as uh, it continues to have ministers who don't believe that climate change is real. Just finally, Reuters is reporting that it was China that was behind that hack on emails and of course even the Australian Labor Party, also the Liberal Party, the Nationals. Should the government reveal who was behind the hack? Should it be publicly disclosed? Well, that ultimately is a matter for the government. Um, I mean, those, it's, it's up to the government of the day to make those decisions uh, in the national interest and, and they're questions you should put to the government. You don't think it's in the national interest for us to well, know? Well, uh, it's whether or not I think that isn't actually the point. I'm not the person who can make that decision. The person who can make that decision is uh, the relevant ministers inside the government. So, you know, that they make the decisions about what is disclosed and what is not. Penny Wong, thanks for joining us. Good to speak with you. Penny